Now we're going to discuss the quadriceps muscles. These are your secondary hip flexors. These are four really strong muscles. They are the strongest muscles in your body. Your primary hip flexors are your iliacs and psoas deep your abdomen. Your secondary ones are the quadriceps. The four muscles, the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medius and intermedius, which is quite deep. It's also a vastus. Now, let's just go over the origin insertion and take a look at where these muscles come from. Now, if we look at the pelvis, we're going to see an area right here called the inferior iliac spine. So it's the top of this area, the red tape here. This is a representation, uh, representation of the rectus femoris coming all the way down the leg and basically inserts below the knee on an area on the tibia called the tibial tuberosity. Now, this is the most superficial of all the quadriceps. So, again, from the inferior iliac spine directly down the front below the knee. Now, if you look at the angle here, you'll also notice that it actually comes over a little bit laterally. Why this is even important is because there's an inherent instability in the knee on the lateral side, which has a lot to do with the strength of the quadriceps. That's why it's so important that we have really strong, balanced quads. While we're here, let's talk about the actions of the rectus femoris. Because this particular quadricep crosses both the hip joint and the knee joint, it actually acts on multiple structures, depending on whether the pelvis or the femur itself, the leg, is in a fixed position. So, if we get the pelvis being in a fixed position, it flexes the hip and extends the knee. There we go. Back down again. Now, if the femur is fixed, it acts in flexion of the pelvis and it extends the knee. Right. Good. Excellent. The next quadricep is actually the deepest one. This is the vastus intermedius. Now, this muscle doesn't go up and insert as high as the rectus femoris. It's actually in the upper two-thirds of the femoral shaft. Now, what it does do though is it comes down and basically joins up with the tendons and inserts again on the tibia and the tibial tuberosity. Now, if we look at this structure, it does not cross the hip joint, so it's only involved in knee extension. So, do you want to just perform some knee extension there, Ricky? So, just yeah, straighten the leg out like that. So, it really helps to reinforce the other muscles. So, let's talk about the last two quadriceps the vastus lateralis, which is in pink here, and the vastus medialis, which is in blue. Now, if we look at the different layers of the structures here, we'll see that both the vastus lateralis and medialis sit on top of the intermedius, and most superficial of all is the rectus femoris. Now, it's kind of an interesting thing, if we look at the angle of these muscles here, we'll see that they actually wrap around right from the posterior of the body. So, the skeleton here is actually turned around, and this is the back of the leg on the femur, and there's a little line that comes all the way down here called the linea aspera. Now, both of the vastus lateralis and vastus medialis actually connect right into there and then wrap around and they join in the front here and they go right on top of the intermedius where they connect and then the rectus femoris sits on top of that. Now all of them actually fuse in here and then eventually all of the uh, fibers fuse together and they get into the patellar tendon and that actually contains the patella, goes down and forms the patellar ligament and they all attach below the knee here on the tibial tuberosity. Let's talk about the actions of the quadriceps. Now, the primary action of the quadriceps is knee extension. So, basically taking the knee and extending it out here. That's right, exactly. Now, we can kind of refine that a little bit here too. If the knee is slightly bent, the vastus medialis is involved in slight tibial rotation, just, just a bit, a little there. And the vastus lateralis is involved in rotation laterally. Now, if we have the foot just in this position here, both the medialis and the lateralis and the other two quads, the intermedius and the rectus femoris, are also involved in stabilization of the knee. But the medialis and the lateralis are primarily involved in stopping the knee from moving in a lateral direction. So they help with lateral stability of the knee. Let's discuss quadriceps muscle palpation. Now, palpation is an important technique to develop as a practitioner because it, it helps you to identify the structures that you're, you're actually going to be treating and diagnosing. Now, an interesting point is that practitioners often believe that they're on 
the correct muscle structure that they're examining, yet studies have shown that regardless of whether it's a chiropractor, a physiotherapist, a medical doctor, they're often off by at least an inch. And in these studies, they've been asked to place a bead on the particular structure that they're trying to identify. And when someone will come in and actually try to verify that, they'll often find that they're not on it at all. So this is a very important skill to develop. And we're going to start off by looking at the rectus femoris muscle. So in order to identify the rectus femoris, we're going to be using muscle testing. And anatomy varies from person to person, so the only way to really know that you're on that structure on any given individual is to perform some muscle testing. So we're going to have Mickey assist here, and what I'm going to ask her to do is push her, her shin into my hand, therefore activating the quads, specifically rectus femoris here. So relax. You're going to use your, uh, the pads of your fingertips, and we use them because that's where we have the most uh, tactile sensitivity. And what we're going to do is, you're going to, you know, you know roughly your landmarks in terms of tibial tuberosity and AIIS. And we're going to have Mickey push into my hand here. Perfect. And you're going to use the pads of your fingers to gently strum perpendicular to the muscle as if you were strumming a, a string on an instrument. And you can really feel it pop out under your fingers and relax. And you're going to go back and forth. You're going to have the, um, then relax and then also uh, extend as well. So push again into my hand. Perfect. And you're going to follow this all the way up. You can really feel it popping out here. And relax. And push up again. Perfect. And you're going to follow it all the way up. Okay, and relax here. Good. Okay, and then one more time. And you can really feel it popping out here, right where the uh, AIIS is. You can also follow this back down gently. Okay, now push again. And as you get to the knee here, and relax. You're going to cross over and you can kind of push up again. You can kind of feel the tendon really become tense under this uh, extension here. Good. And relax. And that's how you'd identify the uh, rectus femoris. Now let's palpate the vastus medialis. Once again, we're going to use muscle testing. And this is important because as soon as that muscle activates, you're going to feel the muscle belly pop out under your fingertips. So we're going to have Mickey once again. Bring the leg up a bit. Vastus medialis being on the medial side of the knee, just proximal to the patella. So resist. Perfect. You can really feel that pop out under your fingers. You're going to follow the muscle belly up. Good. And strumming once again. And again. Resist. Good. And this is a very important muscle because a lot of practitioners will have difficulty identifying the borders. The muscle actually comes up to about here. Resist. And then it actually goes from medial to lateral, it does not go straight up into this area. This would actually be the adductors. So once again, resist. Good. And you can feel it right about here as it dives underneath and goes laterally. Good. And relax. Now let's palpate the vastus lateralis. So once again, we're going to have Mickey push into the hand here. Good. And relax. You can really feel that pop out right away. So push again. That's why it's important to muscle test when you're checking these muscles. And again. So following the muscle laterally, you can really feel it as you strum back and forth. Good, and relax. And again, good. And you're going to follow it all the way up. And relax. And one more time, pushing up. There you go. And you can really feel the fibers here. They just pop up right underneath your fingers, right into their insertion there. Good, and relax. Good. I'd just like to go over a few clinical notes. Problems with the quadriceps muscles are often involved in hip, postural issues, low back pain, as well as knee problems. Often, a tight vastus lateralis muscle will, people will mistake an IT band issue for an actual vastus lateralis issue. Other problems we'll see is when we have tight and restricted quadriceps but weakened hamstrings, it'll predispose you to knee problems such as ACL injuries. And the rectus femoris, being the largest and strongest of those quadriceps muscles, crosses two joints, and it actually assists the deep hip flexors in flexion of the hip. So there may be an issue going on with the deeper hip flexors that will actually manifest in a problem in that rectus femoris. So very important things to think about when you're looking at the quadriceps clinically.